Hi everyone, so for this discussion, um, I chose the prompt that was talking about muckraking. So, to get started, um, I'm going to go back to when it all began. So, the Progressive Era um, really saw this uh, muckraking um, explode. So, um, the, this, progress this Progressive Era um, is cited in our book um, from around, roughly around the time that Theodore Roosevelt, Roosevelt um, became president in, in 1901, and then when um, to when the United States entered the war in 1916. So, this progressive era saw a period of reform, and from this reform, journalists who believed journalists believed it was their duty to be, you know, watchdogs of society and. Um, really exposed the problems that had existed in American society. So these journalists were named muckrackers after um, or by President Roosevelt. Um, this era began after the lack of government regulation in big business such as the steel industry. There were also problems with um, immigration and urbanization that was um, that was a big problem that muckrackers decided to write stories about. So, um, these muckraking stories actually, um, saw fame, decided to get, were, not decided, but were really big in magazines because it was not only a cheap medium, but it was also a medium that could reach a national audience. So, from there, um, S.S. McClure, who owned, um, who's the owner of McClure's magazine, um, really helped these, um, would publish these muckraking, uh, stories and, um, was the first official, was credited as the first official magazine to publish, um, first official muckraking magazine, I should say. So, um, one of these journalists that was published in this magazine was Ida Tarbell, whose articles focused on John D. Rockefeller Standard, Standard Oil Company, and it focused on two points that is cited in our textbook, on page 329 and it says um, her series capitalized on two interests of readers so the first one is the infatuation with the rags to riches stories of millionaires and the growing unease over the increasing power of trust in big businesses so um, she focused on the underhanded practices that Standard Oil used to drive like their competitors out of business basically um and then from there another prominent name that was seen as muckraking was lincoln steffens who wrote um for example tweed days in st louis and the shame of minneapolis which the shame of minneapolis focused on um the corrupt mayor of minneapolis whose name was albert alonzo ames um, and then from this period, there were, um, many prominent names, um, known to muckracking as this period was significant with about 2,000 muckracking articles appearing just in the first decade and a half of the 20th century. So, um, but however, there was another prominent name that didn't just appear in magazines. Um, so Upton Sinclair proved that magazines were not the only medium to reach a national audience. Um, his muckraking efforts came in a form in a book titled The um, The Jungle, and it explored and exposed the meat hacking industry. So um, this muckraking era started to see a decline in about two years after it had appeared, and um, this is cited for five reasons on page 335 in our textbook. So, first of all, um, number one, it vested interest killed the reform-minded magazines. Um, number two, the public grew tired of a continuous steam of exposés. Um, number three, the best reporter reformers moved on to other endeavors. Number four, muckracking journalists lost their base of support as the progressive impulse in the nation declined. And lastly, as the most optimistic view, um, the journalistic investigations had prompted reforms 
and thereby diminish the need for feather mug racking. So like that last um, point said, um, it did bring changes upon the American uh, way of life, such as what's like producing numerous legislative reforms. Um, and this muckracking, the char characteristics of muckrackings can still be seen in today's um, media. And so I do think it is a legitimate concept. So, um, for example, social media has become a way, as people believe they are reporters, you know, they basically pick up their phone and record whatever's happening. And they put it on social media and this... Um, you know, this prompts a lot of um, social issues like, you know, police brutality and everything. So, um, social media is really big on this. Um, and then, people using modern media and social media, um, like I said, have the same characteristics of muckracking in a way. So, for example, um, the feminist movement, the Me Too movement, as I should say, um, brought to light a lot of uh, men that are guilty of sexual assault that women were too scared to come out and say and um, that they didn't really, f that they were just scared to do it and, you know, were scared of the repercussions. So, um, this movement started, or for example, I'll say this, for example, um, women accusing um, Harvey um, Winston of sexual assault came out after the New York Times published an article accusing him of decades of sexual assault. Um, you know, there were numerous girls, I think over 15, that had come out and said, or women that came out and said this. So this movement has really prompted, um, you know, change in, Amer change in the way that um, men can't get away with this anymore, that they are fired from their jobs, that they, lo they start losing everything, that... Um, and this has really prompted a change in the way that not only men view women, but also as society view women as, um, you know, as we need, as society needs women. So that's all I have.